All right, we're starting Chapter 7, Lesson 5, 7.5, Solve and Write Division Equations, and that starts on page 561. So you should have these pages in front of you to start taking notes. We begin by looking at a real-world link. It says allowances. Leslie spends $5 a month on snacks at school, which is one-fourth of her monthly allowance. Complete the questions below to find Leslie's monthly allowance. Draw a bar diagram to represent $5 as one-fourth of Leslie's monthly allowance. And then what is Leslie's monthly, monthly allowance and what operation did you use? How can you check your answer to determine if it's accurate? So why don't you go ahead and fill these in, and when you come back, I'll give you the answers. Pause now. All right, here are the answers. So for number one, it said that it's in fourths, so I went ahead and separated it into fourths, and I knew each spot was $5. And so ultimately, I knew I was going to multiply 4 times 5 to equal A, which was the allowance for Leslie. Um, in Le and then Leslie's monthly allowance is going to be 5 times or 5 times 4, or 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So that's multiplication, and 5 times 4 is $20. That's how we check our work. All right, in the situation on the previous page, equation A divided by 4 equals 5, where A represents the monthly allowance, means that the monthly allowance divided by 4 equals 5. So we took that monthly allowance, and we divided it by 4, 4 equal points, and each point was going to be $5. So since multiplication and division are inverse operations, use multiplication to solve division equations. So that inverse operation, how do we, how do we get the number by itself or get the variable by itself? For number one, it says solve a divided by three equals seven. Check your solution. So using the models in method one, it's showing that we have a as our total thing. We're dividing it into three equal parts, and we know that each part is going to be seven. And so if you want to figure out how much it is total, what A is going to be, we would take 7 times 3, which is 21. Now the other method is using symbols. Um, this is where we're using the inverse operation. So next to symbols, let's write inverse operation. So A divided by 3 equals 7. To get rid of the divided by 3, we're going to times by 3, so we can cross simplify those out. And we get, and then what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the other. So here's our t chart. So now that the 3's are gone, we just have a equals 21. Um, the reason that we can do this by multiplying, undoing the division by multiplying, is if we actually solve this out, we would cross simplify our threes and we would have a over one. And isn't a divided by one a? Because anything divided by one is itself. And so that's why to get rid of the divided by three, we multiply by three so we can just get rid of it. It's like getting rid of the denominator by multiplying by three. All right, now you're going to do a and b on your own. Go ahead and pause the video now. When you come back, I'll show the answers. All right, so the answer for A is 72, and for B is 32. And don't forget to check your work. It specifically says to do so in the directions. So the answer, the one that you should be circling, are these answers. And make sure you circle them. That way we know what the answers are. Sometimes we get mixed up and we end up saying that 9 is our answer. Well, 9 is not the answer. 9 is the checked work. So just make sure you do that correctly. All right, now also do C and D, and we'll come back and I'll show you the answers. And here are the answers for C and D. M equals 45 and B equals 60. And you see that I showed my work, I checked my work, and I circled my answers, which are 45 and 60. Multiplication property of equality. Um, in words, if you multiply each side of an equation by the same non-zero number, the two sides will remain equal. Um, so if you have 3 equals 3, which obviously 3 equals 3, and we say, okay, well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 6, as long as you do it to both sides, we're keeping that balance, and we're going to have 18 equals 18, which is still in balance. So over here in the algebra side, if we are multiplying times 4 on this side, 
we have to do it on the other side to keep it balanced. And when we do that, we're actually getting rid of the 4 um, that was being divided into x, and we have multiplied it to the other side, the inverse operation. And so we're equal. We multiply both sides by 4, and we get x equals 28. Um, and don't forget, we can always check our work by saying 28 divided by 4 equals 7, check mark. When you solve an equation by multiplying each side of the equation by the same number, you're using the multiplication property of equality. So you guys should be getting used to seeing all these uh, different property, you know, properties of equality. We've got multiplication, we've got division, we've got subtraction, addition. So E, um, go ahead and do that on your own. When you come back, we'll go over the answer. All right, here's my answer. Now, this is where I think drawing the pictures can sometimes be really helpful. If we know that we got 60 apples in one-third of an hour, and we want to know how much it is in a total hour, well, the total hour will be three-thirds of an hour. And so if each one-third of an hour we get 60 apples, we're trying to find out how many we got in total. So I'm going to ultimately do 3 times 60, which is 180, or if you set up your equation, because it does ask you to write the equation, that's that piece right here. A divided by 3 equals 60, or you can even call it 1 third times A equals 60. It's basically the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. And so 180 apples in one hour is what makes sense. All right, example number three it says Carla is buying ribbon for costumes. She wants to divide the ribbon into eight and a half inch pieces for 16 costumes. Write and solve the division equation to find the length of ribbon Carla should buy. And so it says to let R represent the length of the ribbon that Carla should buy. Um, and we want to divide that into, it clearly says that, divide it into eight and a half inch pieces for 16 costumes. So we need to figure out what we need to start with so that when we divide it into 8.5 inches, we're going to have 16 pieces of ribbon altogether. And so the equation that you need to write is going to be R divided by 8.5 equals 16. I'm sorry, that looks so sloppy. Okay, because we want the total ribbon, they're 8.5 pieces, size pieces, and we want 16 of them. Um, another way that you could do this problem is by setting up a picture, if you'd like, to give you a better idea. So this is the total piece of the ribbon. We want 16 total pieces, so we need 16 equal slices here. Okay, which I didn't do a very good job with. And then um, each of these pieces would be 8.5. Okay, so each of these pieces are going to be 8.5 inches. And so when we do that, if we were to do it, we would say 8.5 each one for all 16 of them, and we could shortcut that by doing 8.5 times 16. And so they already gave us the answer that R equals 136 inches. So Carla should buy 136 inches of ribbon if she's going to cut it into 8.5 inch slices for 16 costumes. All right, for um, the got it for letter F, if you could please do that on your own, and when you come back, I'll show you the answer.